Hello everyone, my name is Anton Cataldi, and for my tech talk today, I'll be introducing you to React VR. So here's just the basic agenda, gonna ask some rhetorical questions, answer them, then give you a key overview of the React VR dependencies and technology stack. Then I'll be introducing you to the key components and events you can use to build React VR applications. I'll go over the React VR CLI, which is a very handy tool, and then I'll be introducing a quick demo. So, good question to start off is, what exactly is VR? Well, I just pulled this uh, definition from Wikipedia, which I think is succinct, but I believe the important part is the uh, second sentence, which is that VR is all about just immersive experiences for your users. Uh, here's a quick example of a VR application. It's the game's Lucky's Tale for the Oculus Rift. It came out about a year ago. It's a third-person, uh, well, yeah, third-person platformer game. And uh, although it's not a first-person game per se, it does give a lot of the immersive experience because, as you can notice, as the user reorients his head, the background adjusts accordingly. And now another natural question, what exactly is React VR? Well, it's just a JavaScript framework published by Facebook for creating VR applications. It builds on top of the concepts of React and React Native by support of the browser APIs WebVR and WebGL. And it's super new. It's super cutting edge. It just came out uh, April 18th, 2017. <laughs> okay, so here are the uh, dependencies I was talking about. Uh, you can see React VR there. Another key one is 3.js, so it's just a JavaScript library which allows you to create uh, 3D images. There's uh, WebGL, which is a browser API which allows you to render uh, 3D images in the browser. And what I think is really cool is the WebVR API, which is experimental and allows you to basically connect to any VR headsets you have connected to your desktop. Okay, so just like React, we use components to build our applications. Same thing, React VR. Uh, here are four of the key ones, I believe. Uh, the first one is the view, and that is a uh, container for elements. We can apply uh, flexbox styling, uh, image styling, etc. And notice um, the numerical units instead of pixels like we use for uh, React applications, these units are meters. Uh, second one is the Pano component, uh, that's short for panorama, and that encompasses what we typically think of as the uh, background for our uh, VR application. They come in two flavors, there's the equirectangular form, which, the fir which is the uh, first code snippet, and uh, you just have to give it an uh, image with an aspect ratio of uh, two by one, so twice as wide as it is tall. And then the uh, second uh, Pano component is the uh, cube map style. And you have to give that uh, six separate images. Uh, and they have to correspond to the uh, axes in the form I gave on the slide. So positive x direction, negative x direction, positive y direction, negative y, positive z, negative z. Uh, there's the simple text component, which self-explanatory displays text. And lastly, there's the model component which allows you to embed uh, 3D graphics in your React VR application. Uh, it has a source attribute, which takes an object with two properties. There's the OBJ, which is just the object file, and the MTL uh, property, which corresponds to the material. And now we have the components, but we have to give them life. So I like to think that router events in React map to cursor events in React VR. And you can see there are two videos on the slide. Uh, the top one illustrates the on-enter and on-exit events. So you can see when the cursor overlaps with the text component, the text changes from green to blue. And the on-exit event fires when we remove the cursor from the text component and the text changes back to green. And then the, the uh, bottom example illustrates the on-input component and I have the on input component map to the primary mouse click click, and it just alternates the background of the text component. And 
Another thing I really like about React VR is this super handy uh, CLI tool. And you can basically get the scaffolding up for your React VR application in two steps. It's just npm install, React VR CLI, and then you just React VR init, whatever you want to call your project name. That's it. You're done. And you can see on this slide, this is the uh, scaffolding that you can get from the React VR CLI tool. There are three key files you have to keep in mind. There's index.vr.js. That's what I have shown on the screen. As you can see, it's kind of similar to our main components in React. Uh, just one thing that might look a bit weird if you're just coming from a React background is the line at the bottom, the app registry .register component. So you just have to register your main component with the app registry. And then when you actually run the React VR application on a different system, it allows the native bundler to load and run your application in the proper format. There's also the static assets folder. And you keep your uh, files that you use for the, uh, your panoramic images and your model files. Just keep them all there. And there's also the VR folder, which has the index.html file and also the client.js file. You don't have to really worry about that too much unless you want to enable uh, custom options at runtime. OK, this is all cool, but now I'm going to illustrate a demonstration to give you a clear idea. OK, so. I have on the left an uh, example of a React VR application loaded in the browser. And on the right, I have the source code for this application opened in my uh, Atom IDE. I didn't create this application I found online, but I think it's really cool. So, and like I was saying before, uh, with the client.js file, you could enable options at runtime, including hot reloading. So that means any changes I make to the source code will be uh, dynamically reflected on an application running in the browser. So let's have some fun with this thing. Another component uh, we have here is the ambient light component uh, that gives environmental lighting. You can see it's 2.5. Let's change that to 1.0. Uh-oh. Looks like the sun went out. Let's try to adjust that. Uh-oh. Put too much uh, juice in the sun. It's like uh, what you call scorched earth policy. Let's get things back to normal. And also, um, see, we have this uh, rotate Y property in the transform of the style component for the two models. That's how we have this, uh, these two models uh, rotating about their y axes. Also good to note is uh, this is the positive y direction. This is the positive x direction. And <coughs> also the z direction goes into the screen. So we can also adjust. Where is it? Ah, the rotation property. <coughs> so if you divide by a small number, it should be rotating faster. Let's check that out. Cool. Or it's spinning faster. Let's get that back to normal. OK, there we go. So that's it. Thanks for listening. Just got some.